Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to our second webinar on new ways of teaching. Today I'm delighted to introduce and welcome Ana Rosa Gutierrez uh, with her webinar called Transformational Teaching A New Reality. Uh, Ana is an academic and digital coordinator who's contributed to both the private and public systems. She's been an English teacher for 13 years She's published and edited ELT material for PRONI programmes, and she holds a BA in admin and ELT and language diplomas, and is a Pro for Dems, Pro for Dems certified teacher at UAG. Currently, uh, she is a digital coordinator for basic education at the British Council. So this talk, which we're very uh, excited to hear, um, talks about this digital area, which is trans or era, sorry, which has transformed the learning environment. Our students, of course, now have different needs and therefore teachers have to transform their teaching skills. The webinar will focus on digital competencies for a virtual learning environment. Don't forget, if you have any questions for Anna, she will answer them at the end. Uh, just type them in the Q&A section, which you'll find on the right hand side of your screen. So I'm going to pass over to Anna now. Uh, welcome, Anna. Thank you so much, Ella. Thanks everyone for joining us today, for being here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, sharing this knowledge, and I really hope to contribute even a little bit about your professional development. Thank you so much. So let's start. This is transformational teaching, a new reality. Uh, teaching implies a lot of things, more than just transfer, um, the strategies that we use in our face-to-face -face sessions to online sessions. So now with this talk, I pretend you to uh, think about what are the skills that you need to have in order to transform your teaching. What is transformational teaching? Which is, of course, a new reality of the pandemic uh, era that we are living. So to start with, I want to start with, um, I'm going to start with a, with, a, with, with a quote from George Quotes. It says, the technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational, which means, of course, that technology is going to help us to improve our teaching, but the aim, the main aim of our teaching is going to be always the pedagogic purpose of it. So we have to use it as, as a medium of uh, fulfill our achievements as a teachers. So let's start. And um, this um, webinar is going to be focused on four areas. The first one is the digital competencies framework. Did you know that there is a framework that, that we need to um, work, uh, where it, it establish all the competences that I need to have in order to be a digital competent educator? Just like we have these levels of English in the Common European Framework that I need to know in order if I am competent uh, about talking English or speaking in English, uh, there, is also, there is also a framework um, talking about digital competencies. So we're going to talk about it. The second area we're going to talk about is the digital pedagogy summer model. This is a framework that will help us because uh, we all know that technology um, is helping us to improve our, our students' learning processes. But how can we use effective technology into students, into the, 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 the medium that we are using, the technology, in order to, in order to have our students learning, in order to, to develop these skills in them, in, in our learners, right? So we are going to uh, work in the summer model, which is going to help us to understand the levels of the human cognition process that are taking place into our students' minds. So we're going to go deeper on it. We're going to understand what are the levels that we need to, to develop, what are the skills, the competencies, and, and see what kind of tasks we have to, to, 
to implement in our daily lessons, in our, in our daily online lessons. OK, the third area is going to be the pedagogic wheel. Uh, this is um, a very a must tool that we have to use in our lessons, so we're going to talk a little about it. And the top tools for learning, um, which is also a pretty important uh, topic if we want to transform our teaching. So let's just start by asking you a question uh, by playing with technology, because I like to play with technology and at the same time learn about it. So this is a mentee activity. And the mentee activity uh, is for you to answer a question. The question says, do you use technology to foster learning strategies in your day-to-day -day teaching? I want you to be honest with this answer because um, most of the time when we do, when we teach face-to-face -face and we have to turn to online sessions, what we do is we transfer the the strategies transfer the knowledge from face to face to online. But do we really use technology to foster not by transferring, by, but by transforming our learning? OK, so think about it before we enter to the content of the web of the webinar. I want you to think about it in an honest, in a very honest way and tell me the answer. Do you use technology to foster learning strategies in your day to day teaching? And if yes, tell us how. If no, tell us why. Think a little about it. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes in the meantime that I share with you, which is the, the mentee code, uh, the same that you have in your chat. Um, um, uh, follow the, the, the link, please, www.menti.com. Enter the code number and answer the question. And in the meantime, that you reflect and that you uh, think about your answers, I'm going to share with you uh, the Mentimeter um, app that I am uh, right now uh, displaying. Uh, this is a, a pretty practical tool, interactive tool that you can use in your lessons. Mentimeter is the web page that you have to enter in order to to create your lesson. So you are using Mentimeter. I know you have used because we have been in this uh, technology uh, world since more than one year ago, right? But uh, um, I see your answers right now. Most of you are answering yes. Excellent. Great. This is what we need to do, right? We need to to think about how we how do we uh, foster, create, implement, boost, stimulate our students with this, with this, uh, um, with this technology, right? The code is 49236598. So uh, let me see. Um, let me go back here. OK, the code is 49236598. Again, if you have a different one, just please enter this code. This is the correct one. Um, and tell me your answers. Once you answer yes or no, we see that we are, we, we, we are seeing that, and that most of you are answering yes, which is excellent, excellent. Now, uh, think a little about what, how then. If you answer yes, think a little about how. And let's answer the following one, the following mentee activity, which, which is precisely um, this one. You have it in your in your devices. You have it displayed in your in your computer or in your cell phone, whatever you are uh, trying to reach mentee. And tell us how. Okay. Yes, you are using it now. Reflect a little about it and tell us how you are using it. In the meantime, that you are thinking of it, that you are reflecting about how you are using, how you are fostering the learning strategies, which is that, which are the activities that you use to do so. Let's start in the meantime, so we don't, we don't, uh, uh, we still continue with the, with the talk. Let's continue and. Let's start by um, commenting the first area that I told you that we're going to uh, we're, that, that we were going to start with is uh, ex 
precisely to talk about what is the digital competent uh, competencies for educators. What is it? Um, who created? How do I have to follow this uh, framework? So this is a, a framework created by the European Commission published in 20, 2017. I know and you know that there are different frameworks that establish what is necessary to have in order to be a competent educator, a competent teacher. But when it comes to talk about the use of technology in the classroom, this is the lastest published and one of the most used and the international one as well. So if you want to be a certified teacher, competent teacher, uh, we need to stick on it. We need to follow this framework and we need to know according this information. What are the skills that I need to develop in myself in order to be a competent uh, educator or teacher, right? So what the, what this framework does is it allows teachers to use technology to create digital content in a communicative and in a collaboratively way. So it works uh, the competences, which are the knowledge, attitudes, abilities, in order to be um, to use the technology in a competent way for our classrooms and for our students. Why? Two main reasons: problem solving and generate new knowledge. Remember that the soft skills of the 21st century are critical thinking, problem solving, citizenship, leadership. So we need to foster these uh, soft skills in our students and we ourselves as a teachers. So this framework help us exactly to use technology in order to fulfill and to develop these skills, right? And to acquire this knowledge as well. So uh, let's explain a little bit about um, the, the framework. It is divided in three main areas. Uh, educators, which are the professional competences and professional engagement, and also the pedagogic competences, which implies everything that I need in order to teach and have my students learning, the digital resources that I need to develop in order to work in my lesson plan, in my, in my, plan, in my lesson, sorry. And how can I empower my learners to learn and at the same time assess the process? And also the third one is the learner's competencies because it's not only that I am going to be able to teach and going to be able to use technology and to develop as a digital competent, but my learners need as well to develop these competencies. I need to make them think about it, process this cognitive um, activities, actions that they need to do in order to be competent, talking about the digital world, OK? So uh, if you wonder how is that I can know if I am competent or not, so I want to share with you this page, the one that you have also in the chat box right now. Uh, and this is the page of the European Commission, uh, the web page of the European Commission. And it has a tool, a self-reflection tool. So if you're wondering, how can I know if I am competent or no? What do I miss in order to be competent? So get to it. You have here in the bottom um, the level and the, in, the language that you want to use. Click on it, enter, make the reflection, use the reflection tool and verify what you need to do, what you need to have, what you need to develop in yourself. It's a good start if you haven't do, done so, OK? So let's continue. And um, now let's talk about uh, those areas and those competencies that you need to foster. The first one is information and data literacy, which means that we need to be able to browse, search, and filter information from internet, 
all the information that is in the internet, we know that is not reliable. So we need to know which information is reliable, valid, and we need to teach our students as well to know how to um, how to um, analyze that information in order to use it in a proper way for their own benefit and not the, 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 the other way, right? So create personal searching strategies, evaluating data, information, and digital content, and organize information. Those are kind of the competencies that we need to develop um, in order to be competent, digital competent educator. And one of the books that I'm going to recommend you to read that is going to give you a lot of information regarding this area is How to Teach English with Technology from Nikki Hockley and Gavin Dudnett, which link you have also in your chat box. So the second uh, area we're going to talk about or, or the other competencies is the communication and collaboration. So what do I need to to develop interaction through digital technologies. I have to interact through digital technologies. I have to share the, the what I what I have. There are a lot of websites uh, of community, complete community of 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 teachers that if you start working with them, sharing your knowledge, is going to be the correct path for you to be. A, digital competent educator, engaging in citizenship as well. We were talking about the soft skills, collaboration, netiquette. What is netiquette? Those are the rules that I and my students need in order to use the technology. There are rules to use it. So which are, do you teach them to your students before a lesson? Are you sure? Where did you get them from? So all those are all this is the kind of information we need in order to deliver a proper online lesson. So uh, managing digital identity as well. Be careful with all the uh, information that we share through Internet and help your learners to do so as well. The third area is the digital content creation. How important is that in the web I can have access to all this uh, content, but uh, also to be able um, to create it because we know we have different contexts in our groups. So do you do you tackle your your students and necessities, the differentiated classrooms that we have? Uh, do you create it or edit your digital content? If not, this is the time for you to start doing so. Here you have pretty good uh, um, websites and, and, and apps to do to do so is genially is one of them screencastify. You can record yourself and start sharing your content just to mention one of them, right? Like worksheets as well. This is for programming, which is the last uh, uh, point of, for this area. And I'm going to share with you Big Guru as well. Big Guru is uh, it's an app for copyright and license, and also it's an app for uh, registering um, according the app uh, and giving the proper attribution of the ideas of content to their original sources. So this is the one that you have in front of, of you. This is a, an excellent, an excellent uh, app. So you can every time that you uh, search the way and that you find information, have the correct reference, for the sake of intellectual integrity, right? So it uh, it it is to to get the benefit of the sources of information that they are cre which are creating the information. So I recommend you to use this as well of any project that you are using, of any information that you are sharing, um, just like this one that I am sharing with you. Um, use it and develop your digital competencies. OK, now we have safety. In the British Council, we have pages uh, to um, that is take as well, which are the, 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 the safety um, actions that we need to implement in our lessons and when, that we need to share with our students in order to to keep this 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 pretty important point in our lives, in our technology lives as well, which is the safety, protecting devices, protect personal data and privacy, health and well-being, and protecting environment. And uh, it refers as well 
to our students so they know how to use technology in a proper way. So be ready for yourself and, and prepare your students as well to be ready to use the internet, right? And well, the last one, problem solving. A technical problems that we may face during a session, during during our the use of the internet, the use of technology, the use of devices, which are how can I um, face them? How can I solve them? Need some responses using digital technologies in a creativity way and digital competency gaps, right? So what is what I know? And what is what I miss to know in order to be digitally com uh, competent? Uh, for this uh, point in a specific, I'm going to share with you the remote teaching guidelines. Those are uh, guidelines uh, um, that are going to be very um, useful for you so you can understand and you can select um, the ones that you need to in order to deliver a proper lesson, online lesson. This is a QR code. Just to talk about QR codes, which is part of the safety of the, the sharing of the information, try using QR codes in your lessons. Some of the benefits you have in, 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 the, in, the, in the screen, but the most important is that it, it helps you to uh, share the information and provides with easy access to links during a lesson, code on a quiz courses, make, make it makes it easy to find the answers if you share it. A video QR code on a worksheet enables instant access to learning videos as well. So try using QR codes is going to help us to improve the safety we're using, which is an area to be a digital competent educator as well. Right? Think about now that we have, this is uh, a quick view about which are the digital competent educators, the skills that we need. So think about them. Think about what you are missing, what you need to develop in yourself, what you need to develop in your students. Think about which are those and reflect about them and write them. Record them so you can know what is uh, your next step on it. This is going to guide you. This is going to tell you that you are in the correct path to be um, uh, a, a competent, digitally competent educator. Now let's start talking about the next area, which is the summer model, which I'm very passionate about because it helped us uh, to develop this uh, human uh, cognition levels that I need to develop or my students need to develop according to the task that I give in the lesson, right? So there is a model, there is a framework uh, developed by Ruben Puente Dura who, who established this model um, regarding the use of technology. So this is equivalent to the Bloom's taxonomy of technology. So did you know that the same way you apply the verbs, apply the cognitive stage for the Bloom's taxonomy, there is an equivalent, uh, an equivalent uh, way of doing it, but with technology, which is how is it? Which are the activities? Which are the tasks? How, how can I know if I am analyzing, if I am understanding, applying, uh, evaluating, creating? Which are the tasks that I need to develop in order to know which are the levels or the stages uh, in the use of technology? OK, so let's start talking about the summer model. It will help teachers to integrate technology, but always with a pedagogical purpose. This is important because it's not only use technology because I have to, because uh, this is what I have to do right now, um, or my school is demanding it to me, or the pandemic is demanding it. No, this is because there is a pedagogical purpose, and which is the pedagogical purpose of your task, which is just the aim of your lesson, and let's reflect about the task that you're going to implement in order to get to the aim, the main aim of your lesson, right? So the model uh, has four stages. 
it goes from substitution to redefinition. Remember that the taxonomy, uh, the Bloom's taxonomy has six stages. Those stages are divided into these four stages, right? We're going to see them in a minute. Substitution is the first stage. Augmentation is the second one, and Borufen enhances the use of the technology. The third one and the fourth one are modification and redefinition, which develop the transformation. And that's why the whole, well, that's why the name of the webinar is transformational teaching. So it is everything about transformational. Um, now let's go deeper and it and let's um, see. What is what it is? So you have a diagram in front of you. It tells us everything about the summer model. As you can see, we have first one. We have the we have the the first stage, which is substitution. If you remember, I just told you this is substitution, right? And then we have augmentation. Augmentation is here, and then we have modification, and then we have redefinition. And I'm, I'm I'm putting some um arrows if you don't see the arrows that I am marking I'm going to try to 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 explain as well the images okay so the first circle says substitution what is substitution substitution is the level where technology acts as a direct substitute so we are just substituting what we do instead of using paper and pen now what we are using is the technology we're using a device we're using a program we're using an app to do the same, we are just substituting the use of, uh, of, of the activities that I used to do without technology, right? There is no function and change in substitution. As an example, imagine that I ask my students to write an essay in word, an essay in word okay? They write, write an essay in word or create a table to organize information. The same way that I am telling, okay, open your book and now you're going to uh, uh, write a table, you're going to uh, answer a table and or you're going to organize information into a table. Well, now you're going to do it, but in the computer using a, a, an app, using a, a, a website, using whatever, right? Or answering are already Google Forms. Instead of answering an exam in, pen and pa with, in, in a paper, so they're going to answer it in Google Forms. They're just using it, but with not functional change. This stage is equivalent to the Bloom's taxonomy verbs or the Bloom's taxonomic actions of remember and understanding, which are these two, right? And uh, this is part of the enhancement. We are only using the technology, but with not functional change. Let's go to the second one. It is augmentation. Um, augmentation is the using of technology, which acts as well as a direct substitute, but it has an improvement. It is, there is a functional improvement on the use of technology, which are the verbs of the taxonomy that I am uh, that I am working on. It is understanding and applying. Right, are those two, and. The task that I am using here could be like use links in an essay. They're going to write the essay, but also they're going to use links on it. So they are improving the use of technology or use an app to spell and check in the essay. They are improving, right? Those are the, this is the second stage. Now let's go to the third one. The third one is modification. In the modification, technology is used to redesign new tasks and transform students' learning. What we are doing in the third one is we are now transforming. That's why it's part of the stage of the transformation stage. Now students are not only using technology, but what they are doing is they are transforming the knowledge through technology, right? As an example of the activity, let's say that students create a Google Doc to work collaboratively with their peers. So what happens here is that they are using a Google Docs, they are collaborating with their classmates, and they are creating all together a document. So they are transforming, they are redesigning the task, and this is part of the modification. 
which are the verbs that they are working in the modification stage, they are creating and evaluating, which are part of the modification, right? Sorry, I made a mistake, but I'm gonna uh, tell you they are, sorry, they are analyzing and evaluating these two, okay? This is part of what they are, they, they are uh, developing in the modification stage. Um, now, the last one is the redefinition. Redefinition is when technology is used as in a transformative way to create new learning, which was previously impossible. I mean, it, it was not um, possible, but only with this kind of activities we can do it. And what they are doing is transforming, they are creating the new learning, they are making it their own, and they are developing these cognitive processes like metacognition, the ones that we need to foster in our students. Which are the verbs, of course, the ones that we have are the last two, the, 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 the last two which are creating and evaluating as part of the redefinition. So here is the way as we can um, as we can uh, share the knowledge with our students, create new tasks, and applying those new tasks to the Bloom's taxonomy as well. Which are the activities in the definition? Let's say that students create a Kahoot. We are not the ones that are going to create it. They enter to the website, they enter to the app, and they create a Kahoot for their peer for peer assessment for their classmates yes now what we are doing is they are creating they are transforming the knowledge students use my maps as well this is another word another task students use my maps my app my my sorry my maps apps to review what has been taught so what they are doing here is they are creating, they are uh, organizing again all the knowledge, putting into a diagram, setting what is important, reviewing, creating, evaluating, and transforming their knowledge. That's why it is a transformational teaching because I'm using technology not only because I have to use it, but because I have to implement technology in my lesson class, in my lesson classes, in my online lessons in order to get to a point, in order to get to a final aim, okay? So uh, this is the summer model, and now let's practice a little bit, Samir. Uh, what we are going to do right now is um, I'm going to ask you to think about um, think about this um, this exercise that I just uh, implement to put Samir in practice. You have in front of you four uh, tasks. There is a link as well, book up link, so you can enter to the link and you can answer it or you can answer it in the chat, don't worry. Book up is another, um, another um, app that I'm going to share with you. It's uh, so an interactive app for you to use in your classes. So if you don't know it, go use it. And if you don't like or if you don't want to, put it in the chat, the correct answer. You have four numbers or four tasks in your screen and you have the four stages. So think about which are the correct stage according to the, 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 the task that I am implementing, right? The first one says, teacher asked the students to take a picture of the homework and share it by WhatsApp. It is number one. What is it? Augmentation, redefinition, substitution or modification. What are they doing with the technology? And check how, just like taking a picture and sending by WhatsApp, I'm using the technology for a purpose. So what you're doing is you're giving a purpose to your activity. You are using technology and you are using technology if you see in a low context because they're just taking a picture from their notebooks and they're sending through WhatsApp, right? That's the way we start working with technology. So tell me, what is it? Augmentation, redefinition, substitution, or modification? The second one. Teacher asks the students to create a document in Google Docs or a document in Google Docs and include images on it. 
So what is it? There are included images and they are working in the document. Is it augmentation, redefinition, substitution, or modification? Okay. The third one. Teacher asks the students to share Google Docs with their peers. Now what is it? Now they are share Google Docs with their peers. They are going, they are going to work uh, the activity with their peers and they're going to create it with their peers. So what is it? Augmentation, redefinition, substitution, or modification, which, which is the summer, um, the summer stage. And with the summer stage, we know which is the, the Bloom's taxonomy stage, right? Number four, teacher asks the students to include a video about what they learn while doing the task. They now are going to include a video. They are now are going to record themselves. They now are going to transform the knowledge. So this is part of the transforming stage. I already said that, but which is the stage? Augmentation, redefinition, substitution, or modification? Tell us which one, right? Okay, in the meantime that you answer me or you work in Google Club with the activity, we're going to see the answers. Let's see the first one. Teacher asks the students to take a picture of the homework and share it by WhatsApp. It is substitution. Why? Because we are only substituting the use of the technology, right? Instead of doing it, just presenting and delivering the, the, the activity to the teacher, what they are doing is they're sharing the teacher through WhatsApp through the use of technology, so they are substituting, right? Second one, teacher asks the students to create a document in Google Docs and include images. Let's see, as augmentation, because what they are doing now, they are improving. Now it doesn't have, in the first one, it doesn't have a functional change, but now it has a functional change, okay? And the change is, uh, augmentation because they are improving, they are including images, they can include links, they can include another another uh, tool and they are augmentating what they are learning, right? Um, let's go to the uh, for one. Teacher asks the students to share Google Docs with their peers. They're sharing Google Docs with their peers, they're creating it, they are sharing it for a purpose, so they are redesigning the task. It is modification because they are redesigning the task, right? And the fourth one, teacher asks the students to include a video about what they learn while doing the task. So now they are redefining the task. They are in the redefinition stage. So you see, how can we use the technology? How can we implement a different task in different contexts? And we use technology. We are transforming our teaching. So this is the purpose of it. Use technology to transform your teaching, but transforming, not, trans not transfer. Transfer from face to face to technology is something, but transform your skills from face to face to online session is completely different. And what you need to know is you need to put in practice the software model, you need to put in practice your digital competences, and you need to go to, to move forward according to this information. I'm going to share with you a Padlet activity in order to um, complete and class this, this, this topic, right? And continue with the, with the following two areas that we're going to have and we're going to be discussing. So please uh, get into this Padlet and I'm going to share with you as well the Padlet uh, tool, which is a pretty uh, interesting classroom board for sharing content, for sharing videos, for sharing audios, for sharing images, for sharing uh, feedback, or whatever you want to share with your students. And you are using technology in order to do so, right? So in this Padlet, you're going to find four questions. Uh, the questions are, um, or the topics are, Substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. So enter it. We are not gonna maybe we don't have time, uh, or we are not gonna have time to see your answers. But uh, please um, participate in it, and I promise that I'm gonna be watching your your and reading your your answers and telling you uh, feedback about them. Right. So substitution task examples. Think about it. 
which substitution tax samples according your groups, according the context of your groups, can you implement and put in there? Which augmentation task examples do you think that can be um, implemented in your lessons? Which modification task examples and which redefinition task examples? So I'm just going to finish this uh, topic just by telling you something. Number one, don't try to get always, always to the redefinition stage. It's going to be demanding for you. It's going to be frustrating at the beginning. But remember, go stage by stage in your students and develop in them stage by stage their skills to be a competent learner and you to be a competent teacher. So think about it. Which are the tasks that you can implement? Write them, write them here in the in the in this pathway that I just shared with you and promise that I'm going to um, uh, give you feedback about them, right? Mm -hmm. So um, right now, let's go to the following uh, topic. Uh, this is a pedagogy wheel. As I told you at the beginning of the session, this is a must. The pedagogy wheel is a must. So what we have to do when we give an online lesson, we need to know what is the pedagogy wheel. And this is a, an Alan's current uh, uh, creation. It, it links perfectly the SAMIR model with the Bloom's taxonomy model and also the, the apps that I can use in each of the stages, the activities that I can use in each of the stages as well, and the, the um, action verbs or the cognitive uh, actions that I need to foster in my students. So the first circle that you have in front of you corresponds to the Bloom's taxonomy, which are creating, remembering, understanding, applying, evaluating, analyzing, just as we saw, right? The second one are the action verbs. So if I want to create, what are the action verbs? What are the activities that I have to implement in my uh, in my in my plan with my students according the context, according their their needs, according what they can do, right? Like in creating, we have produce, change, suggest, and remember we have summarize, match, expand. So what is the activity they're going to do? What is the action bird they have to develop? And what activities are, are they going to perform? Journaling, work processing, animating, video casting. If it is evaluating, okay, serving, reporting, simulation, summary, self-evaluation, and the fourth circle, the last one, corresponds to the apps that I can use in order to know which are the cognitive processes that I want or like, that I need my students to develop. So as I told you, this is a must. Try using it. Uh, if you use technology, this is something that you have to use, that you have to start uh, working on whenever you lesson, whenever you plan your, your lesson, okay? And let's go to the uh, following one, to the end the last topic as well, um, which is the top tools for learning. The British Council offers pretty good courses for institutions, for uh, the public system as well. And in some of those courses that we have given, uh, we, have found, we have found a question, a regular question in the teachers, and they asked us, how do I find those tools? How do you know about those tools? How do I get to them? How do I know which are the tools that teachers are using? Because day to day, mm -hmm. technology is changing. So how we are changing with that? So this is a page um, developed by Jane Hart. And I'm going to share it with you because um, it's a survey for teachers. So enter to this uh, link. Be part of the survey because this is a 2020 uh, top tools for learning, but the 2021 top tools for learning is just right, right now being uh, uh, having a survey, right? The, the web page has a, has a survey where you have to participate, you have to write down or you have to 
to upload, which are the, the to comment, which are the apps that you use in order to be part of this uh, result of the top tips for learning for the 20, 2021 year. OK, this is for the 2020. Uh, in the main circle, you're going to have the ones that are most used by the teachers. We have YouTube, Google, Padlet, the ones that I just showed you, WhatsApp, Kahoot, Zoom, and the other ones are the ones that, that are less used, but used by teachers. So if you want to know which are the most common, or so which are the, 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 the possible apps that you can use in your lessons, go and get them and use them because it's going to be uh, um, very, very, very interesting to start uh, transforming your teaching, which is the purpose of this talk. OK, and OK, just to finish with the presentation, let me tell you something. Become a transformational teacher, not to enable yourself to work on tech and transmit your knowledge through it, not because you have tech, and you are demanding to use it, use it, no. But develop digital skills in your students in a learning, in, in, in a learning environment to empower your students, empower your students through the use of technology. Make them analyze, create, evaluate, uh, understand, remember by substituting modificating, augmenting, and redefining your activities in your lesson plan. So I really hope, really, really hope this talk has, has been useful for you. And if you want to contact me through, uh, through my social media, you have them in front of you in the screen. Uh, it'll be an honor for me to, to be in contact with you. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for attending to this session. I hope to have comp contributed to your, to your professional uh, development, maybe a little bit. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anna. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your, your information, the tools. I'm sure that um, everyone will take away something uh, to transform their teaching in their classrooms. We have a few questions um, and remember everybody, if you have any questions for Anna, please put them in the question and answer uh, section, which is on the right hand side of your screen. Um, the first question is, which tool would you personally recommend to promote speaking in the online classroom? To promote a speaking in online, well, uh, in fact, um, um, Screencastify is a pretty good uh, app to promote a speaking because they're going to record themselves, they're going to speak, and they're going to uh, uh, represent what they are saying, right? Um, this is a very good, very good uh, app to promote speaking. Uh, there is another that use emojis. Um, I'm going to check for it. I don't remember right now the name, um, but it's um, an app where they can record their voices and not looking at the, at the screen, not, not appearing on the screen, but they do they use, uh, they use an avatar. Look, Google on the internet, the use of avatars and um, the voice recorders because we have those kinds of students that they are shy. They don't want to appear in front of the camera. They don't want to, to see their faces talking in English. So this is a good way to promote this book, uh, speaking because what, what they do is they put an avatar, what they want to talk, they record their voices and they uh, put them in the class. So instead we just Look, uh, listen to the audio. We don't look at them. They they don't feel like this, feeling on the spot that they, everybody is watching them. And it is an enjoyable, a funny way to promote a speaking. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I've used the avatars before, and I think especially for younger students who, as you say, can be a bit shy, then it's it's really helpful. Especially, um, yeah. Especially. I've got another question here um, which says, is there a strategy to avoid the paradox of choice? To avoid what did you say? Sorry. 
the paradox of choice, I think um, they're referring to uh, if there are so many things out there, I mean, there are so many tools and things that we could choose. How do we um, avoid this this problem of, well, there is too much to choose. I, I might not choose anything. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's why I, I shared the last the last slide. This is the top tools for learning, and this, those are the top tools for mm. teachers, the ones that teachers use in order to teach. So uh, those are the ones that if you want to know which are the most effective, use them and, and, and verify that information, check it and be part of the survey as well, because it's, it's important to know that we have to filter the kind of, uh, of, of app usings and information in the web, right? Exactly. Uh, we just had another comment. Very interesting. Thank you. Any page on the Internet you suggest we use in class? I think that will be the same answer, right? So using that final slide that has so many tools and pages that will be recommended in class. Um, we have a comment here rather than a question. Um, we need to encourage students to use some digital tools in class, but at the same time, teachers must have clear goals and objectives and be careful on the learning objectives to achieve um, and the way we need to assess students. This is pretty important, uh, Ella, because we, we have always to be focused on which is the pedagogical purpose of our lesson. We can never, never lose which is the pedagogical purpose. Uh, this is the aim of our lesson, not the use of the technology, not the use of the technology, but the pedagogical purpose is what they're going to get, what they're going to develop, which is the skill, which is the competency they're going to develop and which need to to go for it. We, we need to, uh, to tackle it in, in order to have uh, to fulfill the achievement of my lesson. There is a rule, which is the case rule, and uh, keep it simple and simple and straightforward. If you use technology, try use it in a simple way. This is the most simple, simple way that you can use it. If you're going to use uh, tools, try to use three or four no more, the ones that you are comfortable with. Because if you start using technology just because you have to use it, just because you want to know it and you don't know it and you are using it, you're going to have this problem with your students, right? And the, the pedagogical purpose is not going to be fulfilled. So think about it. Use the technology in the best way, the most simple way for you and, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Remember that we as teachers, we always uh, represent what we are, uh, what we are showing to them and we get back the same thing. So if we are worrying about the use of technology, they're going to be the same way. But if we enjoy it, if we use it, if we help them to use it, we're going to be fostering both, both areas. We're going to be uh, fulfilling the achievement, the cognitive processes in my students, but also the use of the technologies. They're going to be competent, skill competence, and digital competence as well, right? Definitely, yes. And I think you're right, a very important point. Enthusiasm is contagious. So <laughs> if we're enjoying it and if we're not worried, that's going to be really helpful. Also. Um, I've got a question here from Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Um, how can I promote the co-evaluation and self-evaluation among the students using apps? OK. Um, Google Docs. Google Docs is excellent to use co-evaluation and self-evaluation. The same, the same. Remember that in the summary model, there are four stages. And as I told you, um, we don't need always to get to the redefinition stage. So we can move forward little by little into each of the stages. So if I start moving from the from the from the substitution instead, instead of uh, peer evaluating or having them peer evaluating or self evaluating, creating a Google Doc, creating a table, having the same uh, rubric in the in the in the document so they can peer evaluate and self evaluate. And they're going to start working with the technology, right? Even though they are working the same information in the paper, now they're going to put it in the into into the into the app or the document that they are using on the internet. They're going to be working with the technology anyway. 
Excellent. Thanks so much. Um, another question here. Do you suggest the use of mobile phones for language learning? And the, are there any tips that you can share? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we return to hybrid classes, which I hope so, uh, um, it is pretty important that we never lose the opportunity to use mobile mm -hmm. phones. There is a complete, a complete um, module in in Teaching for Success, which is uh, one of the, the, the courses that British Council has, um, it is precisely the use of mobile phones in the classroom. How we can use mobile phones? Mobile phones is a powerful, uh, a powerful um, device that we have in our hands, right? So use them, use them. It is so nice to see that uh, learners are when you gave them the opportunity to use their mobile phones in the class. They are more interested in the, in the class. They are motivated. Remember that motivation is also an important part of our lessons. So they are motivated. They use it. And if you want to know about how to use mobile phones, there are a lot of ways to use mobile phones in our lessons. Remember that there is a specific model uh, given by the British Council, which is um, how to use mobile phones, mobile phones in our lessons. So get close to your authorities, get close to the British Council and try to try to uh, to have that that module. It's an online model, a uh, complete online model, three hour model, in fact. Excellent. Yeah, I think students get so engaged with the with their mobile phones. Um, one other question uh, talking about possibly the near future um, for some for some teachers. How can we apply these tools returning to face to face classes in the future? Let me tell you that all of these tools can be applied returning to face to face classes. Why? Because we have the opportunity to work with technology. This is the amazing thing about it that we can use technology not not only because we are in online lessons, but when we are in the classroom, we also have to use technology. That's what I told you at the beginning of the web of the of, of, of the webinar that uh, technology is here since uh, this those knowledge, those frameworks are here from many years ago because technology has been part of the lessons. It's been part of the learning process for a long time ago. So what we need to, to do now is how be creative. How can we use technology in my lesson, in my classroom, returning to face to face? The schools, most of the schools have this access to technologies, most of them. So I have more opportunities. Let me say that I was saying that I have more opportunities using them and the classroom than outside because outside I have to depend on what the student has at their hand. But once that I am in the in the school, now I have the power of what I am sharing, what I am uh, uh, having uh, developed in my lesson, right? Definitely something we shouldn't forget once the pandemic is finished. <laughs> something we should integrate. Yes, <laughs> so important. Yeah, um, I know. I think we have time possibly for one more question. Um, so here is this one. How can I develop digital competencies in a low context environment? There is an opportunity to do it. Remember that I just told you the substitution um, stage in, in the summer model. So we can develop technology. We can develop tech, tech uh, competencies in low context just by sharing an image by WhatsApp, right? That's a simple, a simple activity and I'm using it. OK, uh, once we were in a in a course and there was a teacher who said, uh, I don't have any access to technology. My students don't have any access to technology. So what I did is we created a computer on a cardboard. And what we did was creating a computer, seeing what the computer did, see what we can do with the computer, and you were working with the technology. So that's it. You are using technology in low context. It is possible. And just to say, there is another module by the British Council that is specifies how to use technology in low context. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we don't have time for any more questions. It's almost four o'clock, um, but thank you so much for, for answering the questions that we did have. And thank you to everyone for asking, participating uh, and being engaged in this uh, webinar as well. Thank you so much, Ana Rosa. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining. Um, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, any final words, Anna? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And remember what I just said, transform your teaching, transform it. You can, we can do it, but we need to start doing it, right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to everyone. And please don't forget to join us for our future webinars as well. Thanks very much and goodbye. Have a great weekend. You too. Have a great weekend. See you. Bye.